to Candid Conversations with Kathy. My name is Kathy McSherry, and I'm so excited to dive into today's conversation. Welcome everybody today with Candid Conversations with Kathy. I am here with Brad Hobson of Chicago Title. And I wanted to talk to Brad a little bit, or a lot maybe, of the title process. What does it mean? Um, how is it beneficial for both buyers and sellers? And a little bit of that. So welcome, Brad. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Of course. In fact, Brad used to live here in Savita. He was one of my neighbors in the origin community, and um, they sold at the height of the market, or actually got higher after that, right? Yeah. And then moved to Del Cerro. So he's been a native. To, well, you tell me, how long have you been in San Diego? I'm a native. Been here all my life. Born and raised. Yeah. That's usually rare. One of the few, or at least a few of us. <laughs> yeah. How? Then tell me, how did you get started in the title process? Yeah, so totally by accident. Um, no one goes to, to school, you know, college to, to right. be in the title business. So I'm a graduate of San Diego State. And at the time, uh, my college roommate, um, he had just gotten into the title business as a salesperson. And he came home one day and said, hey, there's an opportunity. Would you like to pursue it? And, of course, I had no idea what title insurance was. But I said, yeah, I think I would. So um, I... Because he was making good money or he was meeting people or just the whole idea attracted you? Not making money. It was I wanted to try sales. I was uh, out of college. I was working for a public relations firm Uh because my degree was in journalism, public relations, and I hated it. So um, I was just ready to try something, anything new. And... um, jumped in and that was 37 years ago. Wow. Well, great. Well, obviously you're very successful. I mean, I use you exclusively. You've taught me quite a bit, but you know, in my 20 years of real estate, I still get confused about the title process. So for people that are new to buying a home or even selling a home, can you just give me like the dummies guide to, you know, if you were the author, um, a, a rough or, you know, a general idea of why it's so important and sure. what it does. So, great. Yeah, great question. Uh, title insurance is a very uh, misunderstood and confusing, confusing. topic for yes. the general consumer. They really have no idea really what it is or what it's for. Um, how it typically comes together is that when there's a transaction put together, so if you are in a transaction representing a buyer-seller, one thing that is part of the transaction is title insurance. And so when a contract gets written, it goes to escrow, escrow, gets the process going, one of the things they do is they reach out and they reach out to the title company that's been selected for that transaction and they open up what's called a title order. <clears throat> and so what a title order is, is it's a way for us to put together a report where we have searched the county records, mm-hmm. we searched the chain of title, and we put together this report to show the condition of the title. And what that means to a consumer is really showing a buyer, especially who the current owner is, what the property taxes are, any types of money judgments. So that would be mortgages. Mechanics lien. Mechanics liens, any kind of other encumbrances. Like for instance, in Savita, it would show any recorded CCRs. It would show you any easements of record. So we put this report together and then we send it back to escrow who then forwards that to all the parties in the transaction. So that'd be the buyer and the seller, Mm -hmm. both real estate agents, and the lender. And then the buyer is going to take a look and review the report and make sure that they're comfortable understanding what the condition of title of the property is. So to to really drill down and make it simple, for a buyer, they just wanna make sure that we've done our job and we go back to the inception of the property. For instance, if it's Savita, we go back to when Savita was created and we look at every transaction, every transfer and make sure that clear title has been passed every time to each new buyer so that the new buyer now is going to know that they're inheriting this property and there's no there's clouds. No, no clouds or challenges that could affect their title to the property. So what's like a number one snafu? I know I had a listing and the title report came through and I believe that there was either a divorce going on or there was mm-hmm. somebody on the property that wasn't on the real estate transaction and it can really throw a deal. So do you have any personal situations where that's happened to you? Yeah, so a a, a typical item that might pop up during a transaction once we've completed our report would be some kind of a judgment or lien against the current owner 
that has to be taken care of before the new buyer takes title of the property. Right. You one can't be, close. One, yeah. because the new buyer doesn't want to inherit the property with that lien, and two, the seller owner of the property owes that money. So it could be a county revenue recovery lien, which would be if they owe child support, perhaps. Ah, uh, it, delinquent HOAs. Delinquent HOAs, yeah, things like that. So that those are probably the typical type of snafus that pop up that they have to be dealt with before you close escrow. Okay. Very good. I just, it becomes so confusing, and I'll be honest, some of my buyers get very confused between title and escrow. They lump them into one. They think title's one thing and escrow is another thing. Yeah. I mean, they think they're both one thing. Right. So how do you overcome that? Yeah, so it, it, for a consumer, the easiest thing to understand is escrow is really the company that coordinates all the paperwork. They're the sender of the transaction. Once it's put together and escrow is open, I could think of it like they're, they're the hub. Mm-hmm. And then there's a lot of spokes that come off. But escrow is critical because they coordinate all the paperwork. They basically follow along the contract and make sure all the obligations of the contract are met before we can close an escrow. So they're going to coordinate with the lender to make sure the lender's information is done correctly. They're going to make sure the seller has signed all the documentation they need to sign, which would be the grant deed, trust certifications, wire instructions. Right. They're going to make sure the buyer has signed off. They're going to make sure the termite report's in, the inspection report. They're the coordinator of all the paperwork. Title insurance, the title company is just one spoke off of escrow. Right. Lending is another one. Lend, exactly. Et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Well, I know that even that basic information is going to help people. Um, I got to ask you, what's your take from a title perspective in the real estate market right now? What have you seen with your business and your company? Yeah, it's definitely been a market shift since about the beginning right? of and summer. A quick one at that. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's not unexpected in my opinion because the market's been going so strong for so long uh-huh. and in the last couple years you know tw- second half of 20 all of 21 the first half of 22 was a frenzy as you know it's yeah. just a, a very low inventory high demand and that's that's shifted now interest rates have played a part of it well i actually think interest rates did it i mean we all knew yeah. they weren't going to be lasting in the threes as long as they did but literally when they hiked back in june i saw not a complete stop, but a definite pause. And then now I kind of still feel like it's more in the pause. I haven't seen the prices here in Savita really go down that much. I mean, maybe a little bit, um, but if it's priced well and it shows well, it's still going. Yeah. And I think we're in a desirable area, but it's definitely been slowed. You know, even my friends on the East Coast, there's definitely that pause. The interest rates especially knock out the first time home buyer. I mean, if they were in four, five, six, seven hundreds, they've now got to dial it back right. to afford that payment. Yeah, I would agree. And every community is a little bit different. First of all, we live in San Diego. We do business in San Diego. Right. Um, I, I think there's a lot of positives about San Diego. But like any market, it, things are pausing. Um, I've been looking really recently at a lot of the both national indicators that I think are important factually about what's going on Uh kind of in the economy. And then I've been looking at really what is the economic or what is the, what are the employment sectors in San Diego? And in my opinion, um, yeah, we're in for a soft landing. I think prices will moderate. I don't think they're really going to go down. I think they're just going to flatten level yeah, off. I agree with the flattening, which especially in a master plan community, when we still have all the retail and all of the commercial that's coming here and we're so centrally located, I just don't see it would be equivalent to me almost like the beachfront property. They never really go down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Savita is <laughs> very unique just for the central location alone allows it to people, a lot more people, in my opinion, in the last five or 10 years, location is more and more important to them. Mm-hmm. And now, because now people are able to, in some cases, work from their home, uh, central location is very nice to them. Mm-hmm. The other thing that, you know, sometimes we forget is it's San Diego. Right. Um, we already have a lot of out of area buyers coming into San Diego from the Bay Area and other areas. Uh-huh. And then if you look at the major economic uh, sectors of San Diego. Tourism, tourism and leisure is the biggest. Uh-huh. And they're projecting that to continue to grow. Literally in the next couple of years, we're going to have 34, 35 million visitors to San Diego. Well, and biomedical. And with the, I yes. just watched and the new pandemic is, you know, within the next 10 years, a new virus yeah. is around the corner. Yeah. And all of that, that sector is Boston and San Diego are the two highest for biomedical. Yeah. So and military. We have. So we have strong employment, I think, 
here in San Diego. I agree. Diverse employment, and if back to the biotech, if you look at the available space in San Diego County, it's about 21, almost 22 million square feet. Mm-hmm. The vacancy rate's only 3% right now. And you I compare know. that to, like, go downtown to the commercial space downtown, the vacancy rate's like 20, 25%. Yeah. So I agree. that That's another reason that San Diego bodes well for its destination, employment, a lot of biomed, a lot of life sciences, a lot of people and employers are coming here. And I think it's, I think it's going to be helpful to our real estate world because I think, I just don't think things are going to plummet. They're just going to level and then over time they'll keep going up. I agree. Who knows? I mean, you know, a world war. I mean, we, we can't control those factors, the stock market, all those things in other countries. So who knows? Or another pandemic. Hey, sorry to interrupt our conversation. I just want to take a minute in case anybody has any real estate questions or concerns, please reach out to me at Kathy at KathyMcSherry.com or my website, KathyMcSherry.com. I'd be happy to help. Now let's get back to our conversation. Um, It's interesting. I love, we are at the rec center, which I don't know if people are aware from the podcast, but it's gorgeous. It has two huge pools and outdoor barbecues and gym and et cetera. And um, just in case people hear people splashing and swimming in the background (laughs) because the new elementary school opened up. Were you aware of that? Yes, I am. Last September? Yes. Yeah. That's been awesome. You know what, before I ask you just a little bit about personal candid conversations, because I know you're a great percussionist, I just want to ask one other thing about reading a preliminary title report can be so confusing, mm-hmm. especially if you didn't even know what title was before you yeah. entered into a transaction. What are the basics, maybe top three things that you look for when you open up that report? Yeah, it's, it's really probably two or three main things. One is- Who you, owns it? Well, you 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 want to start with to confirm the type of policy you're going to be given, right? Which, on most residential property, it's an Alta homeowners policy, so it's a lot of good coverage. Okay. And then you want to definitely confirm who owns it and how they hold title, and then the section, the second part of the report is called Schedule B. It, it's pretty simple. It's really our property taxes current, what kind of mortgages do they owe, and then what other types of encumbrances. And 95% of the time. Taxes are current. There's one or two mortgages. There's a couple easements, and that's usually about it. Okay. So it's it's it. There are ninety percent of the time. Yes. It's basic. It, it, and I review every single report I do. So yes, I, I, and I've called you day. at times, really, like, to go over things. But um, yeah, that I'm sure will help even people that just aren't aware of it. But now, because I know you've got limited time, I want to ask you on your free time, tell me how the being a drummer in San Diego is going. <laughs> Well, thanks for asking. Yeah, I've been playing drums for about 30 years. Uh, it's just a, it's a lot of fun. It's a great hobby. It's a great workout. But I, I, what I like about it is you get into a band, you get this camaraderie going with a bunch of other guys. And I've been in a couple different bands that we played out quite a bit and mostly classic rock, maybe a little, uh, a little more alternative rock. But um, yeah, we've played around over the years, belly up, so happy hours. So classic and, rock 70s, you know, like. Um, yeah. Probably yeah, because we're the same age. That's right. And I just told everybody that I turned 60, so it's okay. <laughs> Good for us. Yeah, right? And um, where do you play? The Belly Up? Yeah, we've played there for Happy Hour or the Kraken, or we've played around. Um, or a lot of times what happens is we, we play private parties. Somebody will come nice. see us play and say, hey, we like, you'd be perfect for art. And music, it's usually right? our age group, and they're like, hey, it come is. play the stuff that we grew up listening to. So right? we, we do that, and yeah. That's or cool. breweries. Or, What's the name of your band? So the band I'm in now is called Dark Side. Okay. And it's called Dark Side because... Because once you get 60, it, you're on the it, dark side. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> it. It's, a, it's just a little bit edgier music. A little more, we've kind of, besides the classic Like heavy rock, metal dark side? No, no, we're doing a little bit more like grunge rock. Just a little bit more edgy, not the typical, you uh-huh. know, super simple classic rock. And so it's just something we all wanted to do. So we just said, hey, we're just kind of a little bit in the dark side. <laughs> nice. Well, when is your next scheduled gig? We haven't have, we don't have one yet because we've been kind of just coordinating. We're, we're trying to come up with, we're just about there. To, when you play out in San Diego, you have to usually have three full sets of music and we're almost there. We're just getting our last. Like three hours worth? Yeah, three hours. So we're, we're just <laughs> finalizing that. And then once that's the case, I'll let you know and we'll, and we'll, then be, we'll be out there. I'd love it. And yeah. you're going to be on tour? Well, you know, if you want to call it that, yeah, playing around. Well, the Kraken and the Belly Up, that's his tour. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nice. And then I also know that you um, have 
share that you purchased property in Rosarita, and I'm dying to see the new photos. You gutted it, and you're right on the water? Yeah, yeah. So we have a house, thanks for asking. We have a house about 10 minutes south of Rosarita Beach, which uh-huh. if you're listening, it's, it's about 40 minutes south of the border. I know. It's really not that it's far. Super, it's about an hour from here. Uh-huh. And um, we've owned the house for 10 years, but last year we did a complete gut job remodel, and um, my wife's this incredible designer, and, and I it's, was sharing it's, that with our producer earlier. Just uh, it's it's we took an old kind of rustic place, and now it's like it's like modern Spanish, really beautiful, like all the beautiful tiles and floors, and every inch of that place is brand new, and it turned out amazing. And and we spent a lot of time in Mexico, um, like every other weekend. And um, you've got new grandbabies. I've got yeah three, and I got another one on the way now. Oh, so wow! We're, we're adding. So yeah, we're we're always busy doing things. You're my idol, <laughs> not for the grandbaby so much, but for the second home, and um, just having a place to go. In fact, I went to a wonderful presentation in Compass, and I can't think of the agent's name, but he has a team, and he teaches his agents how to buy property for themselves, investment property, and um, I was gonna uh, give Liz a phone call regarding that because he said. If you don't have your own investment property within two years of being on my team, you're probably not meant to be working with me. Wow. It is really big. So he started, yeah, it is good advice. Yeah. And he started, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago with a VA certificate, and he's got over seven properties worth over 7.5 million. I was so intrigued by that. So that's why I say, you're my hero because I want investment property, whether it's in San Diego or whether it's in Rosarita. I mean, look how great it's been for you and your family to be able to take your kids and spend on the water. Yeah, it's for us. It's it's the and beach. you can't pay that here. Yeah, it's the beach house we could never afford here, but it's right on the water, and uh, we have used it. it uh, no regrets. It's been a great purchase. I know. I may have to ask you one yeah. weekend. <laughs> yeah. What are the the rates? The rental rates? <laughs> They're good. <laughs> They're actually in this community. We're no, in. from you. Just oh, as a yeah, joke. Yeah, as yeah, a joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they double for you. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. That's so good. I'm so glad you were able to stop by today, Brad. I think Thanks, that Brad. people are really going to benefit from hearing about title and um, a little bit of the escrow and just in general, your take on the market. And has having been my neighbor, now you're still not too far apart. It's been great sharing that with you. And thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, great. Thank you for tuning in to Candid Conversations with Kathy, and I so look forward to speaking to all of you next week. Thanks again. Have a great day.